there was just a huge writer's strike. The Writers Guild of America, SAG-AFTRA was on strike. They don't want robots. They don't want AI writing scripts. And like, are they just out of touch? Is Hollywood out of touch? AI is here, right? Like they just have to accept that AI is gonna be writing scripts and things like that. It's a real thorny issue. And you know, as lunch, as we said at lunch, like uh, it's, it's, it's totally not fair to say John Grisham style of writing and uh, his storytelling formula and then write an AI, AI book or movie uh, using John Grisham's brand, right? That's just not right. And that's got to be prohibited and discouraged. But at the same time, at the same time, AI collectively should be able to write stories. And I, I watched a cartoon that was done all by AI. It was amazing, right? Yeah. And, um, well, I even just the other day, I was playing with my daughter. We were using chat GPT and I was just showing her how to use it. And I said, write a story about uh, about the hero, Addie, who has a problem. Her brother is always annoying her. And then at the end of the day, her because of her brother annoying her, he, sa- he, he saves the day or something like that, right? Yeah. And it wrote out like a perfect story with a full circle amazing. kind of ending. That's amazing. It was shocking. Yeah, and it, yeah. it, it was instant. It was done in two, two like thirty oh, seconds. Yeah, I mean the technology is insane, and it's only going to get better and more prevalent. And uh, you're certainly on the cutting edge of it. Um, my concern would be if you added to the prompt, write a story like in the voice, a of, voice John of John, John Grisham, right? Yeah, John like, and the formula of John, you know, like that kind of stuff. That's where I think it gets problematic. And you know, we're still going to have writers humans writing but we're gonna have ai writing as well there's no doubt i think ai is gonna be writing so like just in that quick example like i can see all these uh these writers in a room trying to figure out well, what's this story gonna be about and how does it end and then someone in the back is just using chat gpt and it's like chat gpt just give us this sick idea you know and then you could just fill in you could fill out the whole structure using the AI and then kind of fill in the specifics. Well, that's collaborative though. The way your example would be a collaborative effort, sure. right? Um, it's to me troubling and sad, you know, because I love to write and I'd love to create and to see um, that function taken away from humans is sad to me, especially, you know, you look at some of the greatest writers like Hemingway, uh, you know, of all time and, and you know, they write so beautifully. They didn't need technology to help them right? well and jordan peterson said this and i'm going to botch the quote but something to the effect of to to write is to think and as you're writing you it helps you to flesh and think out ideas in greater detail yes and if ai is just giving us spoon feeding us everything to think i do kind of cons- i am get a little worried that humans are going to lose our our ability to actually come up with new ideas yeah our mental acuity <laughs> will be impacted and not in a good way no right? when you don't have to think like you know just kids doing their homework now they don't have to do much <laughs> no but i can sit here in front of my computer with writer's block for hours just trying to figure out the first word and then ai just gives me that boost to to get it going you know? sure sure and i think if it's a tool great um but if it's just substituting for human humanity that I guess it, it, there's nothing wrong with it as long as it's disclosed. Um, but it's also sad if, if if we don't have the great writers and, and thinkers putting their creativity on paper or on film anymore. That, would, to me, is sad. It'll be a different level. But I think about those writing rooms. In the writing room, they did have 20 people all getting paid 150 grand a year. Maybe more. I, I don't exactly know exactly right. what they get paid. They get, uh, you know, now you've got five people getting paid eighty grand a year, and they're just using AI to, like, you know, what happens to those other fifteen people? Those fifteen writers, you, you're not gonna be able to go on strike forever. They're gonna the 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 movie studios, the producers are just gonna find new ways to to get sure. it done. Sure, I mean, arguably that's an indictment on capitalism, right? Because capitalism just goes to the cheapest cost providers to get the job done. Right, mm. and if it can get the job done as well, and it doesn't cost you as much, if anything, it's going to be a hard thing not to pursue. Because how do you compete with companies that are doing that? Yeah, and we we haven't gotten into the AI celebrities yet either, because AI celebrities are becoming a thing. There's this influencer, Lil Maquela. She's got like seven million, two million, I think two point one million followers on Instagram. <laughs> so all these these millions of people are following an AI 
Avatar. She's an AI avatar. That's yeah, it. Yeah, she yeah. has YouTube videos. She has a TikTok. And, yeah. it, you know, it still is a little bit choppy, but I mean, I don't think we're that far off from having the lead character in movies being some sort of AI avatar like The Rock of, or something, you know? No, there's no doubt it's going to come. It's going to be here. There's no doubt. It, I, I, I don't know how to tell you otherwise. It's, it's, um, a tr problem for people and anytime you have this major shift in any industry there's always disruption right and there's going to be a lot of people put out of work yeah yeah well i think it also opens up a lot of opportunities for the the people that are leveraging the tools and they're in the right place and they're innovating in different ways so you know with with any great transition there's gonna be great opportunity too i would think so yeah um there's a great quote by senna the uh, f1 car racer you ever that where he said that uh, it's difficult to pass people on a sunny day. When it's raining, it's very easy. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. a great quote, right? Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Tons of opportunity. Cool. Well, speaking of opportunity, Matt, where what is the, the current project that you're working on? What are you most excited about right now? Sure. Well, um, Man in Red Bandana was my first film. That was with Gwyneth Paltrow, as you, you mentioned, and um, won no, numerous awards and, and, and I honestly I never thought I'd be making a second film I just thought that was my focus I was so all in so invested that it never even dawned on me crossed my mind would I do this again and um, a few months before we were finished the production company that was helping me complete it invited me to be involved with their feature film a film called Vault it was a heist film which is kind of my genre mob and heist I love those kind of movies and um uh, they had already attached to it Chaz Palminteri, Don Johnson, among others. And I'm like, yeah, I'll get involved with that. So I got to, at a high level, I was a producer on that film. And it's obviously very different from a documentary because you got now these celebrity actors and actresses, props, scenery, sets. And it was a whole new world for me. And I'm like, this is so cool. Yet I'm a producer. I'm like at the highest level of the food chain, sitting right behind the director, watching the monitor as the scenes are being shot. And I'm like, this is so amazing, right? So when I made the first film, I, I knew likely it wasn't gonna make money. I knew I was gonna lose money, uh, but I didn't make it as a financial venture. It wasn't an investment by any means. It was a piece of art to share with others, share with the world and hopefully encourage others to think a little bit less about themselves and a little bit more about others. Mm. Like Wells did, Wells uh, who, who passed away on 9-11, he gave his life to save 10 strangers. Was that in, in Wells? That's is that the the security guard who went back into the building? No, no, uh, that's a great story, by the way. And obviously, he died as well. Uh, but Wells worked on the hundred fourth floor of the South Tower, and he was an equities trader. And uh, after the plane hit the other building, he told his mom. He actually told his friend he's going to get out, and um, then his tower came down. Uh, you know, was hit and then came down and. And after a few weeks, excuse me, a few days and then a week, the family realized that he didn't make it. And so obviously they were devastated. This great kid, captain of his high school um, hockey team and always was thinking of others first. Um, they were, you know, obviously devastated to lose their only son and brother. And um, it was just uh, incredibly hard for them. So um, Allison, Wells' his mom, never kept given up looking even though she knew she was going to find his bot you know him his his person his being that he didn't make it she just kept looking and eight months later the um the new york times had an article and then there were two women who said that they were saved led up and out by a man with a red bandana mm. and as soon as she read that she's like they're talking about wells they're talking about my son you see wells always had a red bandana from the age of eight just this habit he got into his father carried a blue one i wanted to be like his dad so they gave him a red one and uh it was his thing he wore it under his hockey helmet when he played uh in games uh he had it to clean up spills it was just his little signature item and so when mom read that these two women were saved by a man who had this red bandana covering his face uh and that was to protect him from the smoke and dust she said that has to be him 